are not from, from the background, so I will not uh, give uh, fake uh, rosy pictures. Uh, it might be a master's in uh, statistics, master's in finance. Mm -hmm. It has been designed by people from a high frequency trading background. Uh, was um, for a non-technical candidate, someone who comes from finance or pure sciences background, uh, what, I mean, what should be their roadmap? Uh, sh would, should they aspire to get into HFT if that is what their liking is? Uh, so that is one of the questions. Pure science. Uh, also, so like things like, uh, also, uh, uh, one of uh, when I joined up to join uh, was from physics. So we we are done using physics and so theoretical physics and so on. So because that domain involves uh, so your sciences, so that domain involves a lot of uh, maths. You have to be really good in maths, stats, statistics. So that is a skill set that could be transferable in this industry because here you have to find alphas find trading strategies by analyzing terabytes of data. So, uh, yes, uh, was your question about uh, background in finance or background in uh, pure science? Sorry, I forgot. So basically, it's more about people who do not come from the programming side. Uh, oh. and other domains like, say, as physics or finance, uh, oh. do they stand or should they aspire to get into HFT if they don't have a programming background? Most likely. Programming is not as scary as you think. <laughs> It's just uh, thinking logically. So if you are not from, from the background, I will not uh, give uh, fake uh, rosy pictures. Uh, it might be a bit difficult because means you could get some job somewhere, but then uh, I'm guessing means if you are talking about getting uh, a job in one of those, means in a top HFT firm, then uh, in a uh, very meaningful role, uh, you have to be good in programming. If you are not, then uh, uh, you know, even if you somehow get into it, uh, it's going to be difficult. Because you, uh, you, 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 as part of your role, you have to compete with traders in the market, right? So you have to find alphas, you have to code your strategies, make changes, and then find uh, code new hypotheses, test them against simulators, and so on, right? So you would need to be good in uh, programming, either for analysis or for uh, limiting your exhibitions. Right. And I think, yeah, I mean, I think one thing that you mentioned that programming is not scary. So if I, from coming from a management background and I can pick Python, I think anyone can pick in this world. So oh, well, well, I, I didn't know that. So I think uh, <laughs> right. I, I, I'll see that. Right. Right. Nice yeah, not, maybe not as good as HFT, but yeah. So, but um, however, coming to that, I think uh, uh, generally people are like for, for people who have asked about this side, uh, of whether they can join with our programming. They're looking at their uh, profiles without uh, certain courses or certain uh, areas where they can pick up the skills, which uh, takes me to one of the uh, uh, points. Like, do you think, uh, think programs like say EPAD, CFA, uh, others, uh, would, would they help in grasping the skill sets required for quant, even if it's for the research side of things? On the code so, research side for HFT uh, rules? Very uh, technical heavy. So uh, by technical heavy, I mean very statistics heavy codes. So be it masters in uh, statistics, masters in finance, mm -hmm. uh, definitely helps. CFA, to the best of my understanding, is a very functional, sorry, fundamental, fundamental course. So it's not uh, a stats heavy or uh, quant heavy course. CQF is uh, quant heavy, but then not for not necessarily for capital markets. It's a lot of quant across. So like masters in finance. So these are good courses, uh, which will introduce you to a very quant and uh, statistical way of looking at things. Uh, EPAT, uh, this, I will, uh, because I'm a director at, at this uh, institute, so I might have a biased viewpoint. If I were to say as an uh, outsider, it is, it, it, okay, so uh, it was designed by people who are from a high frequency trading background. Initially, all the faculty were from IRH when we started. And then that, that is how it was for some time before we got about external guys like Arnie Chan and so on and so forth. So it has been designed by people from a high frequency trading background. Uh, and uh, even the newer faculty that we have got, uh, 
from I think around seven or eight countries. So all of them come from a very quant uh, heavy trading background and a very systematic trading background. And uh, uh, the course content from what I see, it's actually very nicely suited. So uh, for someone who's trying to make an uh, initial inroad into the industry. So, and someone who's already working in say a quant role, but not in HFT, uh, the uh, tech part of it, how tech links to, uh, can, can be used to uh, scale, uh, what we call, can be uh, used to leverage and scale up the uh, quant strategies. So basically how you can bridge the tech, uh, those portions of EPEC would help you. So basically uh, it will give you the complementary skills. So uh, there, there could be people uh, from the tech industry. Uh, Exchange traded one part of the uh, program will give you the insights uh, that will help you get into HFT. If you come from a exchange traded one or whatever banking or whatever whatever quant industry, the tech part of it or the exchange traded part of it. So you you might come from a banking industry or uh, say the, you, uh, you might just be doing risk uh, uh, analysis or you might be doing some analysis of uh, OTC products, exotic products, and so on. The EPAT programs. Uh, uh, focus on exchange traded products, uh, the quant strategies for exchange traded products, and then the technology bit of it. Uh, I personally find it, uh, means I, I could be biased because I'm uh, one of the first guys to uh, build the initial core structure for this. But then, because it was designed by people from this industry, uh, I find it relevant. Um, at the same time, I say that masters in finance, CQF, and so on. CQF is very broad, and then it's the uh, it's typically good for say that's my personal viewpoint. Good for say getting into a quant bank role, so right. exotics and so on and so forth. Yeah. Thanks. So I think uh, we spoke uh, decently enough on the technical side of things, but there are um, certain aspects more on the problem solving mindset of people that you have hired or IH has hired. So any particular personal qualities or problem solving abilities that uh, you value while hiring for such roles? Perseverance. So, <laughs> perseverance <laughs> is uh, critical and then uh, basically uh, it's like this. Uh, you might give up just be before becoming clean this word. And yes. then, then you might become no one. And then you might have just one small hill to climb and then uh, post that you could become uh, even better than clean this word. So it's like you're climbing a hill and then you might just give up just before you are. So uh, perseverance is key. And uh, so what we look for is uh, uh, sparks in their resume. So uh, if you're asking me as a hiring manager, what would I look for? So every year I interview a lot of candidates. Yeah. So mm -hmm. sparks in their resume. So basically, for example, I might be checking for what are your passions and hobbies and interests in life. And things which are your passions and interests and then you uh, to what level of excellence to what level of uh, seriousness to what level of uh, uh, have you pursued them so mm -hmm. if you said that hey uh, xyz was my uh, hobby because my mom bought a particular instrument and then gave it to me when i was in class eight i played it for one month and that's it then it doesn't showcase that you are like you want to explore mm -hmm. things to the uh, final degree, right? So that is what is required because it's not easy uh, in our industry to uh, find a profitable trading strategy because things are not on the surface. You have to dig really deep. So mm -hmm. therefore, uh, what we look for are people who have showcased that uh, means whatever they are interested in, uh, did they pursue it to a very serious level of excellence? Did they pursue it to a very uh, fine degree? Uh, if it seems that, okay, uh, you, you have scratched the surface, a lot of things, but they never pursued anything at, to a very uh, high level of depth. Yeah, so that might be, so perseverance and then commitment to uh, actually doing something, uh, uh, being, uh, working on a problem statement for long till you find a proper solution on a difficult problem statement for long. So those are, uh, the, I think you said personal qualities, right? Those are personal qualities uh, the, uh, that would... Uh, so you have to demonstrate that. So, uh, Miss, uh, uh, I, I definitely do look for 
sparks in the resume. There has to be some spark. Whether it is economic, whether it is personal, whether it is professional, there has to be some spark. It, has, it should not be a, no, what do you call it? A, uh, you can't be a average everywhere. Right. So yeah. you, there has to be something which uh, should make you say that, hey, uh, wow, this is really great. I, I, I would have loved to do that. So right. uh, if I have some time, I can give a small anecdote. So uh, I think, I'm sure there are, you guys are running sort of time, so I'll try to make it very quick. So uh, I read this when I was in uh, around 2002 or something. So uh, Ogilvy, uh, the marketing company. So uh, when everyone joins, and then I tell this story to a lot of my colleagues. Uh, so because I probably believe in it. So mm -hmm. what they what do is every time someone new joins, so they are gifted uh, a series of Russian dolls. So in a Russian doll, when you open the bigger doll, you find a smaller mm -hmm. one. But the smaller one, you find something even smaller, and so on. So basically, uh, it, uh, it's gifted as a reminder that uh, if you start hiring people who are smaller than you, then you become a company of dwarfs. So therefore, every time you hire someone, you have to feel that uh, I can learn something from this person, and then uh, you have to be awed by that person. 